Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 25 mini series with the Seattle Mariners. And this is likely to be our second and last mini series in Out of the Park Baseball. Hopefully, we'll play with the Mariners for a couple of weeks, get through a few seasons. And by then, we're hoping for a third and maybe possibly even a fourth patch for the game to be out, at which point, hopefully, things will be stabilized enough and uh, consistent enough with what we'd like to see in the game that we'll be able to begin our long play for the OOTP 25 season. I'd like to thank right now uh, Fake Name, Tyrese Morgan, and Ben Meerig. Uh, they all suggested playing the Mariners at the end of our Yankees miniseries that we concluded a few days ago. And although uh, it's not always a democracy on this channel, uh, in this case, I did go with what... Uh, most people who opined wanted, and there also have been a few other commenters over the last month, month and a half that have expressed some interest in the Mariners as well. So although we won't be playing Seattle for the long term, we are going to, as I said, play with them for a few seasons and see if perhaps uh, we can be fortunate enough to deliver the Mariners their first World Series title ever. This is not a bad team. Uh, they've only made the playoffs once in the last three seasons and once in the last two-plus decades. But they've averaged close to 90 wins over the last three years. Uh, they've got some really good young talent on this team. The concern is that they play in a tough division. Um, you've got the awful athletics and the rudderless and Otani-less angels in the division. Uh, but besides that, You've got the defending world champion Texas Rangers uh, with a pretty big budget and the Houston Astros who have won a World Series in the not-so-distant past and also have probably been the most consistently strong team in the American League for closing in on a decade at this point. So two real good challenges in the division. Um, one team, the Angels, that does have a big budget and lots of resources, but... Uh, has not necessarily been managed incredibly well over the last few years. And then, of course, uh, Oakland, perhaps soon to be Las Vegas. But in the interim between Oakland and Las Vegas, will they be Sacramento? Will they be something else? Who knows? We'll find out. That's not really our issue for this. Um, but speaking of Los Angeles and Oakland... I mentioned that uh, the channel is not always a democracy, and I also mentioned that our long-term play will hopefully be starting in the next few weeks in OOTP 25. Uh, some of you who have listened to our Buffalo Wings series that we concluded about a week ago or have seen the comment section to some other recent videos know that I've kind of got five teams at this point on my short list of teams to play for my long play in Out of the Park Baseball 25. And those teams are the aforementioned Los Angeles Angels and the Oakland A's. And the other three teams that I'm still considering are the Chicago White Sox, the Tampa Bay Rays, and the Washington Nationals. And I'm 90% sure of my decision for the team that I'm going to play, uh, but this is one where it's not a democracy. I do appreciate uh, those of you who share your thoughts on what would be interesting in your minds and what you think I should do with the long play, but given that when I'm doing the long play, I am in my mind committing to dozens if not hundreds of episodes over a period of six, eight, 10 plus months. I want it to be a team that I'm personally really excited to do and invested in. And that's why um, even if there's a vote that tells me 90% of viewers want me to go in a certain direction, given that I'm going to have to be excited to uh, put out these episodes and really embrace this team 
ultimately that's something that I will uh, factor feedback in, but I may end up making an unpopular decision because it's a commitment for the better part of a year on my end if everything goes well with the series. And as I said, it's something that I want to uh, make sure I'm excited about and fully into uh, whatever challenge I decide. I think all five of those teams would be interesting challenges for a variety of different reasons. And uh, hopefully we'll be making that decision official in the not-so-distant future. And we're not in a bad position with this Seattle Mariners team. Middle of the pack budget middle of the pack player payroll the farm system is middle of the pack but starting to trend towards meh but not a horrible situation uh, compared to some of the teams that I just mentioned that will be playing in our uh, long play in a few weeks got plenty of money to potentially spend right now uh, those of you who have watched me before know I'm likely to put a decent amount of that into scouting and player development even though this isn't necessarily a long-term commitment that we're making here to the Mariners. Still want to make sure that the uh, prospects who are close to Major League Ready are going to uh, get as much encouragement and development as possible to ensure that they are as helpful as possible when we do need them. Those of you who watched our uh, recent tutorial uh, a couple of weeks ago on how to improve your coaching staff uh, will not be surprised to know that uh, I have already uh, fired my bench coach and my hitting coach and I've got offers out there to bring in a little bit more talent. The other thing that I'm going to be doing after uh, we conclude this episode and it's going to be a relatively brief episode with just me kind of uh, meeting the team and outlining a preliminary plan is to fire my uh, scouting director, Scott Hunter. Um, he is a highly favored tool scout, but he's only okay in scouting major leaguers and internationals and only average in scouting minor leaguers and amateurs. So we'll be paying off some money to make him do that, but I'd rather have a scout that I really like uh, so I can hopefully have a better clue about the true ratings and the true potential of as many uh, players as possible. But I didn't want to make that move right now because uh, I'd have a lot less interesting scouting information to talk about as I go through and analyze uh, what our team looks like and what I think the strengths and weaknesses are in this episode. And just to check on a couple things before we get into the actual roster, I mentioned that I will be investing in scouting and player development and uh Part of the reason is just to keep things balanced and fair, so I'm just not um, blindly chasing a championship with every dollar I have. Uh, I like to kind of make it a reasonable challenge at least. Uh, but we do also have some prospects who could be helping this team in the not-too-distant future. Two top 50 prospects in the organization, uh, Cole Young, who certainly looks like he could be helping us in the infield. Um, maybe sometime next year, quite honestly. And then catcher Harry Ford uh, builds on what is a decent strength in Seattle right now, but certainly looks like a potentially good defensive catcher with a potentially interesting bat for a catcher in particular. Um, so both of those guys could be helping this team in the not-so-distant future. Also have uh, Jonathan Classe, in center field, um, incredible range for a center fielder and absolutely blistering speed. Uh, I am using the 20 to 80 scale, but I'm showing ratings above the maximum here. And you can see his uh, speed is certainly world class. Question the bat a little bit, but um, he's a switch hitter. And with that glove and with that speed, Certainly think he's got a potential future in Seattle as well. So although the overall farm system is not ranked incredibly high, uh, it does seem like there are some players who could be helping us over the next couple of years, which would be interesting. Uh, also, it's conceivable that I use those players as resources to uh, try to trade for someone who can help us win now. We'll see how the season goes. We'll see if we can compete with 
Texas and Houston in this 2024 season. And if it looks like uh, we're in a position to get the Mariners their second playoff appearance in over two decades, then maybe we'll uh, get more aggressive a few months now and go for it. And we've got a few goals with our owner, John Stanton, who's demanding in terms of his patience and economizer in terms of his fiscal personality. So not the most difficult man owner to work with, um, but certainly not easy either. And unfortunately, despite the fact that I think there is some talent on this team, and you can see they've had winning percentages in the... Uh, 550 area for the last three years with that uh, economizer fiscal personality I don't really know how serious ownership is about winning you can see the team budget was just dropped very significantly by 40 million dollars for this season so that's not positive and ownership only wants us to have a winning record hopefully we'll be able to do that but uh as I said, my goal in playing this is to maybe eventually get the Mariners their first World Series championship and uh, only likely have a few seasons to try to do it. So I'm probably going to be a little more aggressive with this team than Mr. Stanton may be expecting. Uh, he also wants us to upgrade at first base, extend George Kirby, acquire an MVP award winner, find a top 20 prospect, build our farm system into the top six, and then eventually get this to be a playoff team by 2029. So uh, ownership and I have very different time frames for this. Uh, after I review the team, I'll kind of decide whether it makes sense to negotiate any of these uh, potential owner goals. Uh, my hunch is I'm going to be pretty interested in extending George Kirby. Always like big time pitchers and, uh, I think Kirby potentially uh, fills the box there, so uh, I think I'm probably going to want to extend him, but we'll get to meet the team before we start making those decisions. And one final thing before we begin checking in on the players themselves is just our salary situation. Uh, clearly not a lot of guys officially on the 40-man roster, but once we... Uh, move forward a few days uh, there will be a lot more players on this team most of whom will be making the major league minimum but we've got one very long-term commitment uh, but you look at the numbers for j-rod going forward 18 million a year starting next season uh, well into the time frame that we'll be playing in past and certainly that looks like uh, potentially excellent value for the mariners if uh he avoids injury. And the only other real long-term commitment is Luis Castillo, the starting pitcher. He's making reasonable money up until his mid-30s. It's conceivable, if things don't go well, that this contract is a little difficult a few years from now. Uh, but right now, with a really nice four-pitch arsenal, excellent stamina, a fastball in the high 90s and plus stuff, plus movement and plus control uh, feel real good about having the three-time All-Star as a key member of our rotation. Player option for Mitch Hanniger next year. Uh, team option for Jorge Polanco. J.P. Crawford signed for another couple years. Um, and then Mitch Garver also signed for a couple of years. Uh, Crawford and Garver conceivably if uh the likes of cole young and harry ford develop uh maybe we let those guys play out their contracts and or trade them away in a year or two if the youngsters are ready so feel like uh even though our budget's been cut back a bit uh we're fortunate that we don't have a lot of long-term commitments and we've got a decent amount of financial flexibility as we're beginning this playthrough as I said, without any really bad contracts, I kind of like the way this Mariners team is positioned. I think this would actually be a pretty fun uh, playthrough for the long term, but don't worry, I'm not pivoting. I'm going to try to enjoy this over however many uh, seasons we do play, but uh, I've still got other challenges in my mind. So 
So taking a look at that pitching staff, uh, mentioned Castillo already. Uh, we also have Logan Gilbert, 26-year-old, uh, coming off a 13-7 and season, his second straight 13-win season. Looks like a good, solid major league pitcher. Uh, another guy with a nice four-pitch arsenal, throws in the mid to high 90s. Going to start making some pretty reasonable money next year, getting up to $9 million. And uh, he'll still have one more arbitration eligible year after that. But with uh, Castillo, Gilbert, and uh, George Kirby in our rotation, uh, outstanding control, a nice five-pitch arsenal, plus stuff and plus movement, albeit not incredible, coming off of a 13-win season with a 335 ERA, still making the major league minimum. But he does know his value. I checked in on him in a contract extension. He's looking for nine years and almost $27 million a year. So although ownership uh, would like to have us make a long-term commitment to him, and I think at some point we will for the next couple years, given that uh, injuries can cripple literally and figuratively a uh, potential pitching career, probably will just let him play out uh, his major league minimum year and then his uh, arbitration years for at least a couple of years after that before we get more serious about a long-term commitment but really like the top three pitchers on this team all have acceptable to good stamina all throw pretty hard and they all are kind of average or above average at just about everything so Really like the top three. Uh, four and five spots, a little trickier here. Uh, Bryce Miller, another guy with really good control. Eight and seven with a 432 ERA last year, making the major league minimum. Uh, certainly a more than acceptable fourth or fifth starter. Austin Voth might be the weak link. Um, the veterans kind of uh, knocked around um, a number of teams over the course of his career. Uh, back in the Seattle organization now. Looks like a kind of average fifth starter. Not too exciting, but also um, not a total disaster. $2.4 million is what he's expected to make next year. I could conceivably see us moving on from him after this season and perhaps dipping into the trade market or the uh, free agent market to maybe upgrade that fifth starter role or realistically maybe upgrade the fourth starter role and pivot Bryce Miller to number five in the rotation going forward but pretty impressed with the starting pitching here in Seattle to be honest the bullpen however as many bullpens are not necessarily quite as exciting certainly Andres Munoz uh, looks like a potential Excellent closer, 13 saves last year. Off the stuff charts, or off the charts stuff, if I could speak more eloquently. Brilliant fastball and an absolutely exceptional slider. Doesn't have a stun, ton of stamina, but consistently gets into triple digits. Focuses on uh, generating ground balls, decent movement, acceptable control. Certainly feel good about him. Trent Thornton, uh, kind of a more generic right-handed bullpen arm, is a guy who could start for us in a pinch. Not a bad player to have on a team. He'll be making $2 million next year-ish uh, in arbitration, so don't know whether he'll be with us for the long term or not. Ryan Stanek, another pretty generic right-handed reliever. Um, throws close to 100 miles an hour and can get to triple digits. Don't love the poor control, although he only walked 21 in 50 and two-thirds innings for the Astros last year. Uh, so especially given that 40 control, that's not that bad a number. Did allow eight, hum eight homers, though. Uh, that extreme fly ball tendencies and the speed on his pitches, uh, that could be a potential concern from time to time. Uh, certainly a useful arm, going to be a free agent after this year, going to turn 33 during the season. If the season's not going well, might be somebody we look to trade at the trade deadline. Uh, would think it's unlikely that we'll bring him back after this season. 
Gabe Spire, lefty out of the pen, a nice, solid left-handed arm, a good four-pitch arsenal. Uh, has been pretty good the last couple years in the majors with the Royals and the Mariners, and he's still uh, making the major league minimum, or actually not a minor league contract right now, so he's one of the guys who will be making the major league minimum once uh, the season starts, and he's officially on our 26 and 40 man rosters. Tyler Sacedo is the only other lefty in the bullpen. Uh, 30 year old. Looks like a pretty solid pitching profile. Um, another guy on a minor league contract, so he'll uh, likely be making the major league minimum when we uh, do get this season going. Now we get into some of the guys who might be a little bit weaker links. Cody Bolton, 25-year-old right-hander, uh, looks kind of like a replacement levelish type of right-handed arm out of the bullpen. Eduard Bizzardo, 28-year-old, a um, little better than Bolton, but still a pretty generic right-handed relief arm. Don't love some of those personality traits. Uh, he's on the team right now. Another guy with a minor league contract. Probably not someone we'll build around for the long term. And then last but not least, Ty Adcock, uh, another guy whose stuff is not overwhelming. Uh, don't think he's a big part of our future. Looks like he was decent with Seattle last year uh, when he got promoted to the majors finally at the age of 26. Um, another guy who's going to be making the major league minimum. Does have a three option years left, so uh, I think he's likely to be in the organization for the next few years. I think in a perfect world, I'd love to be able to move on from a few of these guys over the next couple of years. Adcock, Bizzardo, Bolton, Stanek, um, probably the first four that I'd look to move on. So certainly if we see some talent left on the free agent market or perhaps when we dig in deeper offline into exactly what our uh, minor league teams look like at those double a and triple a levels may make a move or two at the back end of the pitching staff you know kind of the 11th 12th 13th guys on the team right now but um even the bullpen is actually a little better than i expected Again, only three or four of these guys are probably going to be in our bullpen two, three, four years from now, but there is some talent to work with. So all things considered, I I don't hate this pitching staff. And hate is such a horrible word. I really shouldn't hate any pitching staff. Except for the Red Sox, the Astros, and probably the Dodgers now with all the money that they're spending. Turning to our everyday players, and I kind of already alluded to the fact that with Ford potentially on the way, I really like our catching situation. Uh, Garver, above average defensively, like the power and ability to draw walks, 270 average, 19 homers in 296 years, 296 at bats a year ago for the Rangers, uh, 139 WRC plus. Paying him decent money uh, for the next few years, but uh, certainly feel pretty good about a player who, over the course of his major league career, has put up a 122 WRC+. plus. think he can certainly be an uh, asset for the Mariners. And he's paired up with the switch-hitting uh, Cal Raleigh, another guy who's a pretty solid defensive catcher, another guy with pretty good power. Uh, hit 232 last year, but 30 homers and 75 ribbies for the Mariners. Um, also above average in terms of his WRC plus for the season and slightly above average in terms of his WRC plus over the course of his career. Making uh, the major league minimum this year, um, but he should be arbitration eligible next year. So that uh, number will start getting higher. But not a perfect catching duo, uh, but pretty solid, all things considered. 
first baseman is Ty France. Uh, this is a position that you may remember our owner wanted us to upgrade, and I think that's a perfectly reasonable request. Uh, he was a slightly below average offensive player last year. He's going to be turning 30 this year, uh, making almost $7 million this year, probably going to make close to $8 million next year. He is a little bit better than a replacement level first baseman. Um, I don't see us bringing him back for close to $8 million next year. So I don't think it's unreasonable to try to look for some options to improve offensively at a uh, position where you're generally going to want a pretty good offensive player. A couple of second basemen on the roster. Looks like our manager has Jorge Polanco Chulo penciled in as the starter. Um, okay defensively. In a perfect world, I'd like a better defensive second baseman. A respectable bat, um, put up a 116 WRC plus for the Twins a year ago. Switch hitter, making decent money. We've got a team option for him next year. We'll see how the season goes. Um, it's not an incredibly high number. We'll see what's realistic to, to potentially turn over in terms of the roster this season and into next season. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a long-term relationship. I think a lot is dependent on the development of Cole Young. And uh, if Cole Young comes along uh, relatively quickly, that could uh, certainly make a team option for Polanco less likely to be exercised next year. And maybe we'd look to trade him and move on from him. Samad Taylor, uh, Looks like he's probably going to be a utility player for us. Um, decent fielder, decent speed, can also play all three outfield positions. A uh, bat that's not embarrassing. Uh, only put up a 51 WRC plus uh, in 60 at bats for the Royals last year, but uh, is a utility infielder and someone who maybe would need to start from time to time. I think he could do a lot worse than Taylor. Luis Urias, uh, third baseman, acceptable defensive profile for a third baseman. You know, in a perfect world, I'd love more range and love a better arm, but uh, he can handle the position well. Split last year between the Brewers and the Red Sox, uh, did not hit much with the Brewers. Pretty close to league average with the Red Sox. Uh, looks like a okay major league bat. Set to make about $7.5 million next year. Would think that he's conceivably someone we might be moving away from in the coming years. J.P. Crawford, uh, one of the more high-paid players on the team. Got two years left after this season. 266, 35 doubles, 19 homers a year ago. Uh, competent defensively and pretty much competent offensively. Uh, Left-handed bat for an infielder, especially a middle infielder, that's always a little bit of a unique trait. And he's been pretty much a league average offensive player over the course of his career. Given the money that we're paying him and the fact that his range is uh, on the higher end of most of the infielders that we've seen so far, probably going to be with us for a few years um, maybe we look to move him towards second base down the line in a perfect world I'd love a turn double play rating a little higher for a second baseman but um, if we're able to really upgrade at shortstop either organically or through the trade or free agent market maybe we pivot Crawford to second or third down the line and then there's Dylan Moore, uh, another guy who's very versatile defensively. Love to have guys like this on the team who are versatile defensively, competent at a bunch of positions, have some speed, and have bats that, while not necessarily going to ever win a silver slugger, are certainly more than competent. Only have him signed for two years, including this season. Batted just 207 a year ago, but did have nine doubles, seven homers, and 145 at-bats. So despite that 207 average, um, he also picked up some walks 
and was pretty close to a league average offensive player. Going to be turning 32 this year. Uh, would think that uh, he's probably on the team for these next two seasons and then will be likely to move on to somebody else. And last but not least, we'll turn to our outfielders. Uh, Cade Marlowe uh, looks like a fifth outfielder for this team. Decent speed, competent defensively. Labatt is probably not really the type of bat you want for a major league outfielder, but is a fifth outfielder uh, who, as I said, is competent defensively at every position and also has some speed. If he's the weakest link as a left-handed fifth outfielder on your team, it's not a horrible situation. Taylor Trammell, uh, I believe he was actually uh, cut by the Mariners today uh, before the season got underway. Uh, I may end up keeping him around. Uh, you can see I'm only here on May 18th. I've noticed that uh, with the live starts um, here as we're heading into the official start of the season, and obviously, well... You don't actually know when I'm recording this, but it's Thursday evening, so uh, I say it's obvious that uh, pretty much most all of the opening day games are done at this point, um, but I've noticed that with the live start, the minor league teams are just not really filled out, and you've got like some teams where there's only four or five players. I don't know if those will automatically populate as you move forward. So I just wanted to keep things as simple as possible for this playthrough so we're not actually doing a live start. So it's conceivable that uh, Trammell may be on our my team, even though he's uh, apparently not really going to be with the Mariners this year. Like the captain personality, um, he's got a little pop in his bat, another guy who can play every position in the outfield. Um, just a 130 average and 46 at-bats for Seattle last year, uh, but I believe one of those three home runs he hit was a grand slam in those 46 at-bats that he did have. Uh, he'll probably be on the team this year. Don't know if it's a long-term relationship. We will be having a long-term relationship with J-Rod, though. Uh, we already touched upon him a little bit when we were talking about the salaries. $10 million this year and then $18 million a year after that is more than acceptable. Put up a 119 WRC plus a year ago, and I think you could argue when you look at his batting profile and the speed that he brings that a... Uh, 119 type WRC plus is potentially a disappointing type of year for him. And when a guy had over 30 homers, over 100 ribbies, close to 40 steals, close to 40 doubles, over 100 runs scored, and an 818 OPS. And you can, I think, make a credible case that um, the year might have been a little bit disappointing. I think you're... Uh, you found yourself a player who you're very happy to build around. So love the fact that we're going to have Julio Rodriguez in center field for as long as we're playing with these Mariners. Mitch Hanniger, uh, bat with a little bit of pop, uh, positive influence in the clubhouse, uh, competent defensive corner outfielder, coming off of a rough year with Seattle last year after uh, reasonable production in 2022. Making the big bucks. Um, he's got a player option for next year. I tend to think he'll probably opt in to that player option. We don't have a lot of uh, salary pressure on us right now, but I could certainly see us looking to deal him uh, maybe close to the trade deadline, or if not, next offseason if he does opt into that player option. I think there probably are more economical options than him going forward and probably uh, probably not just more economical options. I think we can probably find a player who's also better for less money than we'd be potentially playing Hanniger next year, uh, whether through the free agent market or the trade market. Last but hopefully not least, Luke Raley uh, came over from Tampa where he had a uh, pretty productive season largely driven by his power, 23 doubles and 19 homers in 357 at-bats. Uh, another competent defensive outfielder. The batting profile doesn't overwhelm me. 
but he's been an above average player when he's gotten a chance in the majors. Um, He just hasn't really gotten a ton of chances in his career until last year with the Rays. Um, Don't think he's a long-term member of the Mariners, but I think he's a more than acceptable guy to have as a uh, fourth or I say he'd probably be the third or fourth outfielder. Um, Rodriguez and Hanager to me are pretty obvious starters. I think Trammell, given that captain personality, we're likely going to keep him around. If we could upgrade from a Rayleigh or a Marlowe, kind of as a fourth or fifth outfielder, I think we'd be more than willing to do that. I mentioned I like the catchers and we've got help coming. I'd like to upgrade at first base, um, particularly offensively. I don't hate the infield, though. Um, outside of you know the higher-paid players, Polanco and Crawford, who we're probably going to have with us the next few seasons, I don't know that we're going to have long-term relationships with any of these players, but um, it's not a bad roster. I mean, being from the eastern United States, uh, the Seattle Mariners aren't a team that I pay a ton of attention to um but this team is not bad um i don't want to get too over my skis uh and i did note at the beginning of the episode that uh the mariners are in a tough division having to uh likely finish ahead of houston and or texas to feel real good about making a playoff spot um i mean it's conceivable they could still finish third in the division and uh get a wild card in the american league but clearly you feel better about your odds of doing that if you can get to second place in your division but it's a team that's got some talent um and as i mentioned i've got a little money to spend um not really thinking that there's going to be anything that's uh, interesting on the free agent market at this point. Looking at the batters, uh, we think Junior Marino's got a fair amount of attention. Um, I don't know. Oh, looks like he's, I was going to say, I don't know if he's a real player or not, but it looks like uh, he has been in the Twins organization for a couple of seasons, even though he's a uh, only 19 years old. He was playing rookie ball. It is a 16-year-old three years ago. That's impressive if that's really true. Um, I don't know what would have happened to him a year ago. Released by the Minnesota Twins. Um, I assume if he's got stats here that he's a real player. I don't really know why if you've got a kid who's been 17 and 18 years old in rookie ball hitting 290 each year why you'd release him but certainly a guy that we might think about uh bringing on to our team other than that not a ton of real high-end players available brandon belt would be an offensive upgrade at first base um but he's looking for a lot of money and he's got a few negative traits in the clubhouse Uh, i don't know if that's really an answer for us elvis andrews would give us another captain personality not looking for tons of money not a big time offensive player but a decent glove still can steal a base from time to time miguel aparicio a young outfielder competent defensively the bat looks major league ish so there's some interesting options to consider as far as the batters who are on the free agent market no one who's going to be a true difference maker but certainly looks like there's some people who could um, potentially help our team Pitching-wise, maybe there's an arm that upgrades our bullpen a little bit. Phil Bickford, got some negative personality traits, um, but a relatively solid profile. So there's definitely some guys for me to spend some time investigating here who might be able to help uh, the back end of our bullpen. 
So as I uh, think about what we're going to do with this playthrough, I um, certainly think it's realistic to think that we can have this team a regular playoff participant. Um, I'm not willing to say that they're going to be a perennial playoff team, uh, especially this first year. Uh, those of you who have watched me with my mini series over the years know that a lot of times the first year with a team, I really just like to get through it as soon as possible, not necessarily make a ton of dramatic changes, and then use that first full off season to really put my imprint on the franchise. So I think this team can certainly compete for a playoff spot this year. Are they a favorite to get in the playoffs, being in the same division as Texas and Houston? Probably not, but it also doesn't seem like an unreasonable goal. Um, it's not impossible or even unrealistic. So if we don't get in the playoffs this season, I'd certainly hope and expect that we'd be in the playoffs in 2025. Um, I kind of like a lot of the stuff here. And as I mentioned, there's money to spend. There's not a lot of long-term commitments. And even some of those medium-term commitments in the $10, $12, $15 million kind of range are not um, commitments that we wouldn't be able to get out of in the trade market if we decided to. So I think there's a lot of flexibility with this team. There's some really interesting talent, particularly with the starting pitchers and the catchers in J-Rod. Uh, there's a couple pretty interesting prospects in the minors. So I'm going to spend some time between now and the next episode examining the minor leagues a little more deeply, uh, probably assigning some players to some different teams, taking a deep dive at our minor league system. Um, we may end up making a move or two to kind of change the back end of the 26-man roster. Uh, there might be a pitcher who could help the bullpen. There might be a fifth outfielder or a utility infielder that I think fits a little better than some of the guys that are on the default roster right now. We'll also take a look at the free agent market. I think we can probably get a body or two there that could help us as well, but not expecting to make any real dramatic changes. I'll probably also be uh, upgrading the minor league coaching staff offline after uh, the information i shared earlier that i also plan on uh or that i already plan on moving on from our uh, bench coach and our pitching coach i'm sure there's some other moves that i'll be making with these minor league coaches as well but i'll do all that stuff offline uh so when we get together for our next episode hopefully we'll have a full coaching staff uh hopefully we'll have a new scouting director <laughs> hopefully uh we'll have added a couple of um interesting players into the system through the free agent market and be ready to start simming the uh, 2024 season with these Mariners. Uh, just a programming note for those of you who are still with us, probably not going to have the uh, torrid pace of new episodes over the next several days that uh, I've had since OOTP 25 came out. Uh, we do have some uh, family fortunately coming into town for Easter uh, tomorrow evening on Friday. Uh, so in an effort to be a non-horrible host, I probably won't be uh, playing as much OOTP this coming weekend as I have over the past several weekends. Still hope to get an episode out here and there, uh, but if you don't see much of me over the next several days, that is the most logical explanation why. But I'm actually really looking forward to uh, playing with these Mariners and we'll find out uh, what we do to prepare for this new season and uh, what we end up doing in the 2024 season as it gets underway in our next episode. Until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.